It symbolized hopelessness. It symbolized entrapment. It symbolized enslavement, and it symbolized the Cold War. In fact, it became the icon, the picture, of the Iron Curtain. I'm talking about the Berlin Wall. In the years following World War II, Germany was divided up four ways between the Allied powers. The Soviet Union took over East Germany and also East Berlin, and the British, Americans, and the French took over West Germany and West Berlin. And the country was not united in the years following the Second World War. In fact, Russia maintained control of East Germany and also East Berlin and established a, a Soviet government there, a communist government, while the western portion of Germany was reunited to itself and became the country of West Germany, and they maintained control of West Berlin. And so the East Germans, under the subjugation of a communist government, which served to do nothing more than be the front line of defense against the Soviet Union's defense line, and that became the Iron Curtain. Their sole purpose was to expend their resources defending against a possible capitalist invasion. They were frontline soldiers, but they were forced into that position. They were denied human liberty. They were denied civil liberty. They were put under communist rule and they were denied the freedom to practice religion, to worship God. They were denied the freedom to pursue opportunity, to better themselves. In fact, most of the resources of East Germany were taken out of the country and taken back to the Soviet Union. That's the way the Soviet Union took their payback after having been invaded by Hitler's forces in World War II. The subjugation that the East German people suffered coupled with the freedom in West Germany and throughout Western Europe and even on to the United States, prompted many East Germans to flee the country. There were refugee camps along the uh, border of East Germany and West Germany, and people were fleeing the country just at a massive rate. From 1950 to 1961, it is estimated that 3.5 million Germans escaped from East Germany, approximately 20% of East Germany's population. 3.5 million people. One out of five East Germans left the country from 1950 to 1961. During this time, the East German government closed their borders, fenced off their borders, but there was still Berlin. Berlin was located in the heart of East Germany, and Berlin was divided in half just as the country of Germany was divided in half. East Berlin belonged to the East German government, and West Berlin belonged to West Germany. And so even though the borders between East Germany and West Germany were closed, you still had the opportunity, if you were in East Germany, to flee across the border into from East Berlin into West Berlin, and then you could fly out of West Berlin and fly to freedom and escape over to Western Germany, Western Europe, the United States, uh, somewhere in North or South America. You could go to freedom. All you had to do was walk that four blocks down the street from East Berlin to West Berlin, and many East Germans did this. So in 1961, the East German government, under pressure from the Soviet government, closed the border from East Berlin to West Berlin. They dug up the streets leading from East Berlin to West Berlin, and they began constructing a wall to divide East Berlin from West Berlin. This change happened seemingly overnight, and families were divided. Suppose your kids, you lived in East Berlin and your kids went to West Berlin to visit a friend, to stay the night with a friend, a sleepover. That wall went up in the middle of the night. Your kids were stuck in West Berlin. And this happened quite a bit. In fact, I remember reading stories when I was a kid of a, of a young boy who was trapped on the other side of the wall from his uh, family. And so an East German border guard lifted up the barbed wire so the little boy could slip through back to East Berlin to get back to his family. That border guard who allowed that little boy to cross was never heard from again. Um, it symbolized what was wrong with the countries behind the Iron Curtain. The Berlin Wall had little hope of crossing, especially once it was fortified and once it was built up. You had a concrete wall with barbed wire across the top. The apartments that were located near the Berlin Wall in East Germany, you think you're on a fourth floor apartment, you're overlooking the wall, maybe you can somehow get out of your apartment window and get over the wall somehow, those apartments were ordered to be vacated. 
and any building located close to the wall on the east German side, the windows facing the wall were ordered to be boarded up and then later bricked up. And you could not get across that wall. Thousands of people died trying to cross from East Germany to West Germany during the construction and after the construction of the Berlin Wall. You had to scale the wall, get over the barbed wire at the top of the wall, cross the uh, infamous Death Strip, which is a huge strip of land that divided the East Berlin and the wall from West Berlin. And border guards were under the directives that if they saw a defector crossing that uh, Death Strip, they were to shoot the, the defector on sight. There was little hope for crossing that wall and crossing that border. So once that wall went up, it symbolized that the days of being able to escape to freedom were over. You're stuck in East Germany, and you'll be in slavery for the rest of your life. It wasn't until 1987 that President Ronald Reagan stood before the, uh, the Berlin Wall gate and told Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down this wall. Two years later, East Germans now able to flee the country through more open borders and demanding freedom, demanding to be let out of East Germany, protested in such massive numbers that the East German government had no choice but to allow those German people to tear down that wall. And Germany was later unified sometime thereafter. This reminds us of what uh, scripture teaches about the incident. You look, uh, not, not about that incident, but how our lives mimic the plight of the East German people. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 it says that at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. It says that we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise. We were foreigners to God before we came to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and we had no hope. Those who do not know Jesus as Savior, those who are foreigners to God, have no hope. They are separated from God by a wall that is more mighty than that Berlin Wall. But praise be to God, he did give us hope. He did give us a way out. The Bible goes on to say in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, he says, For he is our peace, talking about Jesus. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. The Berlin Wall was torn down by man. It was torn down under the support of a U.S. president. But man, neither man nor a U.S. president is as powerful as Jesus Christ. That wall that divides us from God is the wall of our sin. But the good news is that Jesus paid the price for that sin. He died for that sin on the cross. And he tore down that wall when he died on the cross for our sins. He rose again the third day so that we could have new life through him. That wall has been torn down. It is gone. The question is, will you be willing to cross from East Berlin into West Berlin? Will you repent of your sins and trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If so, you just need to pray to God, confess your sins to him, ask him to forgive you of those sins, and trust that Jesus Christ has paid the price for that sin. If you have any questions, if you'd like to know more about the plan of salvation, if you would like to be saved, or if you've been blessed by this message, you can send me an email, gracepointmbc at aol.com. You can also look us up on Facebook. You can comment to the video below here. You can also send us mail. You can send us something in the mail. You can send it to Grace Point NBC, P.O. Box 1828, Brownwood, Texas, 76804. You can also visit our services Sunday morning. Grace Point Missionary Baptist Church is located at 1045 West Commerce in Brownwood. Our Sunday morning services are at 11 a.m. Wednesday evening services at 6.30 p.m. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and God bless.